When the heart is under fire Another way when the walls are closing in And when I look at the space between Where I used to be and this reckoning I know I will never be alone There was another in the fire Standing next to me There was another in the waters Holding back the seas and Should I ever need reminded Of how I've been set free There is a cross that bears the burden Where another died for me There is another in the fire
the name of the name that is Jesus. Come on. He who was and still lives and will be through it all. Mm. So come what may in the space between all the things unseen and this reckoning. I know I will never be alone.
You know, church, this next song is a new one that we're going to introduce this morning. And I found even in my own life that a lot of times on Sunday mornings we come in here and we sing these songs and the words are great and we feel something. But we forget to get caught up in the moment. We forget to get caught up in the presence of God. So this morning this song is called Nothing Else. And it said that all we want is Jesus' presence. We want to get caught up in it because nothing else matters when we're caught up in the presence of God. Amen. And I think, I think we should remember that during our worship times, it's not for us. Worship is not something that we should get anything out of. Worship is a gift. Like we spoke about last week, God gave us a gift. And this is our gift to Him. Because there's nothing that we can do or say that could ever repay Him for what He did for us. Except just to worship Him. So we're going to take a few moments and we're just going to play. And I want us all to refocus our hearts and feel the presence of the Holy Spirit in this room.
like can you talk some sense into my sister like I'm here working my tail off and she's just sitting there doing nothing and Jesus's response is what makes this one of my favorite moments because Jesus looks at Martha and he says Martha Martha you are anxious and concerned about many things but only one is important only one your sister Mary has chosen the best over the better, and it will not be taken away from her. Mary's decision was to sit in the presence of Jesus, to ignore everything else going on around her, and to sit at the feet of Jesus and to soak it in. church close your eyes with me let's take this opportunity to just sit in the presence of our Lord and our Savior
Father, as we sit in your presence in this moment, I pray that all of our anxieties, all the things we're concerned about, all the millions of places our minds could be right now, that they're cast away. And that our focus and that our goal in this moment is to sit at your feet. To soak in your presence, Father. There are many things we could be concerned about, many things we could be anxious about. Some of them are good things, Father, but let us not sacrifice the best thing, which is sitting in your presence. Father, what a gift it is that you don't just create us and leave us, but Father, that you love us. Father, let us sit in that. Let us be overwhelmed by your presence, Father, and nothing else. Father, we thank you. We love you. Bring us back to this place when things get too heavy. Bring us back to this place when things get too crazy. Help us recenter and to choose the best over everything else and to sit at your feet and to sit in your presence, Father. It is in your name we pray. Hey, welcome NCC to our online service. We're so glad that you're here. Happy Resurrection Day to you. Uh, thanks for tuning in today, and I hope that you your Easter is blessed and surrounded by God's love, the power of the resurrection, which is what we're going to talk about today uh, with family and friends and good food. And uh, I hope this is just a great Great way to start your day if you're watching this at the uh, premiere uh, on Facebook this morning. Uh, you know, uh, this weekend there was a um, funeral of a, a beloved woman, a, a, a wonderful Christian woman that, that many people knew in our town and our church. And, and uh, I was thinking about how whenever there's a funeral funeral like that, it's, it's, it's sad, uh, in many ways tragic. We, we grieve over it, and yet... There's also this, this, this sense, this powerful and profound sense for all of the believers present that, that this person is even now in the presence of God. She is rejoicing with God and, and Christ and, and just in his presence in a tangible, physical way, not in some abstract in a better place way, but in a very real, uh, the Bible talks about Jesus told us, uh, and that's because of the resurrection. And every funeral we of a Christian person, we, we see that glimpse of the power of the resurrection. A and that's what we want to talk about today. I, I read about a young D.L. Moody. D.L. Moody was, of course, the, one of the most famous evangelists um, of all times. And he, uh, when he was a very young uh, pastor, was asked to do his fir first funeral and he said he, he struggled with that because he didn't really know what to say. So he, he searched the Gospels. He looked at Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, looking for a funeral sermon, looking for what Jesus preached at a funeral. But he couldn't find one because there is none. And what he found out instead was that every funeral that Jesus went to, he disrupted. And death could not be in the presence of Jesus because everywhere Jesus went, he dispelled death. And, and not only that, but when he spoke, he could even bring people back to life. And of course, the power of God himself brought Jesus back to life. And that is what we are celebrating today. 
We're also in Ephesians uh, uh, series, and it's called Ephesians from Death to Life. We did part three, and we're doing part four today. This is the last entry into that Ephesians. So I, I, I went through that entire letter again and just pouring through it with eyes about the resurrection and how that weaves through that the power of the resurrection weaves through uh the six chapters of the, of that book and and that's how i sort of put this uh short message together today and i also want to let you know since you're watching online that this is really part one of our easter entries because uh, of course on sunday morning we're doing live baptisms and that's a part of this message really it's the display of this message so we're going to put that in a part two for those of you watching at home uh, look for that second part of our Easter message video on Monday or Tuesday of this week, and uh, we'll have the baptisms, of course, because we need to record them uh, live and, and get that out to you. So I'm really, really excited about that as well. But last week in our Ephesians series, we talked about Paul's prayer for the church, and his prayer was essentially this, more power. He pulled a Tim the Tool Man Taylor. He wanted more power, and we walked through that passage and, and how he prays in chapter 3 for the church to have this incredible inner power, especially to know the love of God through Jesus Christ. And he prays that prayer also in chapter 1. But here he is tapping into an even bigger kind of power. Now, my example of God's power last week through the video was his creation. That's one very big way that the Bible talks about that he's powerful and uh, but Paul doesn't go there. He actually goes to an even bigger power to give us an example to the church. And that is the power of the resurrection. And he goes further by saying this is the power, the same dunamis power, that raw, brutal, almost violent kind of power that we talked about last week. That's the dunamis power of God that we have in our lives once we become a Christian. So when you become a Christian, you accept Christ into your life. That means you become his follower. You have your sins forgiven. You confess them to him and you start living for him. Then you identify in Christ. So let me read the text today. It's Ephesians 1, 19 to 23. And this is the first time he talks about, prays for this resurrection power for all the church. And that includes you listening in here today. I also pray that you will <clears throat> understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now, he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. That's you and me. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere with himself. Hallelujah. Amen. It's so great. This is his prayer for us. And he's asking God to give us a resurrection power that is practical and real and tangible in our lives right here on planet earth even before we receive our resurrected bodies in heaven to live with god forever he is risen he is risen indeed say it with me even at home he is risen he is risen indeed that is the good news here and we get to have that power so let me talk <clears throat> again briefly today about three specific tangible practical ways that we put that power into practice according to the book of Ephesians and what Paul tells us by the Spirit is our way of applying this power. Firstly this, the power of the resurrection is the power to start all over again. It's the power to start all over again. That is one of the primary things that the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ on Easter does for the believer in our hearts. We see it in chapter 2, Ephesians 2, 5 through 6, that even though we were dead because of our sins, all the things we've done wrong, our brokenness, our, our sinfulness, our rebellion, He, God, gave us life when He raised Christ from the dead, the power of the resurrection. For He raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with Him 
in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ Jesus. If you have a paper Bible, underline united or on your phone app, highlight united. So what it's saying here is really profound that when you become a Christian, you get to start all over again, in a sense, with your spiritual life. You get a clean slate. And the reason why is because you are now identified, that is to say, united with Christ in his death, burial, and resurrection. If it weren't so, we'd still be tragically lost and still waiting for salvation. But instead, we become part of Christ. We become in Christ. And so when he died, we died. When he rose, we rose. And that is what we're celebrating today. In fact, baptism is a real life example of this passage. When you go down into the water, it's representing our death in Christ. When we're under the water, that is our burial with Christ. And when we come up out of the water, that is our resurrection. Now, literally, the resurrection already happened in our hearts, but the baptism is our obedience to Christ's command to be baptized to express what has happened inside. We show it outside, and that's what you'll see in the second part of the video. We have eight people being baptized um, and, and just so excited to hear their testimonies on the video as well as see them uh, to, to, to take that act of faith. And that's what you're seeing there. And many of you who have been baptized, you know that that's what that's all about. And it gives us a clean slate. Now, when I think of a clean slate, I remember back when I was a child, <coughs> many, many moons ago, and one of my favorite toys was an Etch-A-Sketch, and I don't know if you've ever played with one of these, but I um, have one right here with me today. Now, we used to love to draw when I was a kid, my brother and I, and uh, we used to use mo mainly paper, but the problem paper, of course, is you make a mistake, or you draw something, and it's terrible, and you want to throw it away. But that's the brilliance of the Etch-A-Sketch. Now, I had to laugh because I didn't even know if I could find one of these, and I, and I did find one, but, you know, when you buy them, they have this big sign on the front that says no batteries, as if, you know, someone's trying to stick some batteries in here. I thought that was funny. And on the back of the box, it said no Wi-Fi needed. That was a big selling point, apparently, for the Etch-A-Sketch. No batteries, no Wi-Fi. You just get this little box, and you have fun, and it'll never run out of energy. But you can draw whatever you want on here, or write words or whatever, and it's it's just so much fun and use these little knobs. If, you, if you've never used one, you got to get yourself one. And of course, what's so great is when you make a mistake or when you're ready to start all over again, you just flip this puppy upside down and you shake it and you can hear that, that satisfying noise. And when you shake it, everything gets erased. It's just the picture's gone, the mistake's gone. You get to start all over again. Don't you wish there was a button in life or an etch-a-sketch of life that you could do the same thing god would just sort of okay flip me upside down and shake me up a little bit and now i'm clean and everything from the past is completely gone and i get to start all over again drawing this picture that's what resurrection does it does exactly that it, it gives us the power to start a again it, the old is gone the new has come everything in the past is gone all of our sins are buried with christ and we are resurrected to a new life. We get to start again. It, it, it's, it's such an amazing truth. It's, it's really one of the most profound things that we celebrate at Easter time is, is a new life in Christ to, to, to be able to start again. Now, secondly, and also important, the resurrection power, the real practical power that God gives us in our hearts, in our lives, every day, right here on earth, is the power to change our lives. Now, you may say, that's just what you just said. But no, it's not. It's actually com really different because if all we got of the re from the resurrection was an etch-a-sketch sort of you get to start all over, it wouldn't be enough because we're human and we're, we're born into sin and we're, we have a proclivity towards sin, the Bible says, and we already know that. We, we mess up. So we need more than just a clean slate. What the resurrection also does is it gives us the ability to change. We did not have that apart from Christ. But because he died and was buried and rose again, and because we are in him and have that same power in our hearts, that we have died very in a very real sense and were buried and were risen again, we now raise up with a new spiritual power to change for the better, to become like Christ. And that's what the Bible teaches. Take a look at Ephesians 5, verse 8. 
Here, Paul uses the metaphor of light and darkness to talk about the change that can now occur in the heart of the believer. When he says, for once you were full of darkness, not exactly a compliment for those in the church, but now you have light from the Lord. So live as people of the light. And this is a strong encouragement and really an, almost an admonition here saying, look, you, you have now received something from the power of the resurrection that you did not have before. But now you are held responsible to live in the light. That means you can live a changed life. That doesn't mean you're going to be perfect. Doesn't mean you're not going to make mistakes. Doesn't mean you're not going to stumble and fall again. But now you're going to give the ability and the power to live in, in the light of the Lord. And that is something you didn't have before. That's, that's part of the resurrection power that we get. Did you ever go into a, a room that just was completely dark? And, and you, I mean, you couldn't see one foot in front of you. Maybe your eyes weren't adjusted. Maybe the, you know, the shades were drawn. It was that night. You just couldn't see. Um, by the way, that's the, why the shin was invented, as we all know, to help us to find our furniture in the dark. Uh, you don't know where your coffee table is, but your shin does, and it'll find it for you. It's a great invention of God is the shin. But Jesus died to actually break the darkness, the power of feeling lost and unable to find my way, and to bring an immediate sense of light. That's one of the things people say when they become a Christian. They, they, they just have this relief of, and they have this clarity. It, it's not like everything's clear, but things start to get clearer and clearer. Jesus talked about it, says you have eyes, but you can't see. But when you believe in him, you have eyes, and all of a sudden you can see, but not physically, spiritually. And so God in the resurrection gives us light. He, he brings us from lost to found and allows us to see things that we couldn't see before. It was amazing when we were interviewing the people for the baptism, and I love doing that. I love baptisms. It's my favorite thing in our church, and I love hearing the testimonies of what Jesus did. It's all glory to him, none to us, none to the church, none to me, just all glory to God, because God did it all, and we just respond and, and, and make a decision of faith. But what was so great is you, you heard one after another, you heard some version of, uh, I, I once was blind, but now I see. Uh, and, and that's what God did for each of the people being baptized. That's what he did for me and for every believer listening in. He, he allows us to see in a totally different dimension. And now we are responsible to bring that change because we can in Christ. We have a different power. Do you ever try to break a bad habit or a sin pattern just by sheer willpower? can't be done. Uh, I, I, I've tried in the past, and even experts now tell us what we already know, which is willpower is a bit like a resource, and it's very limited. It, it starts higher in the morning, and it runs out by the night. Like, you just don't have an unlimited amount of willpower, a and now we know that. Of course, the Bible already knew that. In ourself, we have a limited amount of strength, and you can't break a habit by sheer willpower. What you need is an external unlimited source, namely Christ, who gives us the power and the power comes directly from the resurrection. That is the time when he broke the bondage of sin and death. And he alone can give you that that today. And if you've never known that power, today is your day. Easter Sunday, 2021, to put your faith in Christ. Uh, you, if you're watching this on online right now, you can pause and it'll pick right back up and you can pray and you can pray that Christ will enter your life. You can give him all your sins. You can you can call out to him. and He'll be right there quickly to answer your prayer and lead you into a life where you can become the person you want to become. And then number three, finally, the resurrection power of Jesus Christ also is the power for eternal life. Now, this is the one you might have already known about, and most people rejoice because this world is finite, and we know that our bodies are, are mortal. Um, we know that we don't live forever. Let me read Ephesians 2, 5 again. It says that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. So this verse is telling us that God gave us life. And that word life there is actually talking about a different life. Not only is it talking about that clean slate of the Etch-A-Sketch, but it's also talking about eternal life. This is the kind of life that when you receive it, you will live forever. 
So when we raise up from the spiritual death that we had because of our sins, we actually receive life. That's actually the point in time when we receive eternal life. It's not when we die. That's when we get to celebrate the eternal life because we'll be in the spirit in heaven and receive our, uh, our resurrected bodies. But we actually receive eternal life upon our salvation, upon calling out to the name of the Lord. And so uh, we start eternity, in a sense, here on earth. Um, and so that, that's really, really good news. Because the last time I checked, the current death rate is still at one per person. I didn't check it today. I, I forgot to look at it, but I'm pretty sure today the death rate is still at one per person, meaning for every one person, there's going to be one death. And that is the tragedy of the broken condition. But in the resurrection and when you receive Christ and you celebrate that in your heart, because you no longer have to die. You, your body will wear out and die, but your soul and your spirit will live forever and you'll ultimately receive a resurrected body. So that is pretty awesome news. But I also believe this. Before that, before that decision, before that act of faith, before crossing the line of faith, as we say, people will do just about anything to try to cheat death. Uh, we'll, we'll do about anything to try to prolong our lives or find a fountain of youth of some kind or, or just feel like we did, maybe through fitness or maybe it's through um, some kind of pill that we buy or maybe it's just uh, a facade. I, I read about a, a guy who uh, started a company selling tombstones that were basically TV screens put into the tombstone. They were virtual um, tombstones. And what he would do was he would put video of the loved one. At, so when you visit, it was almost like they hadn't died. And not only that, but he would pre-record all kinds of things that, that the person said. And you could even have individualized messages for loved ones yet to be born, grand, great, great grandchildren or whatever, and put them all on this virtual tombstone. The tombstone went on. There were add-ons you could buy. You had a, you could buy a sensor for when the grass around it was too long. You, you could buy an add-on that would spray incense into the air. Uh, when uh, a visitor was coming, it would start playing and, and so on. I'm not making this up. And why would we do all that? Well, of course, because we're grieving our loved one, which is natural, but also because we want to have the sense that they didn't really die. But they did die. And if we are in Christ, we get to live forever. We get to live eternally with God in a much better state than we are here on planet Earth with no more uh, crying or, or, or no more death and no more disease and no more COVID-19 and no cancer, no uh, sadness, no relationship, heartbreak, no divorce, no, no, no problems, just in the presence of Christ, rejoicing with him and living in, for eternity with the saints. It's really what we get to look forward to. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. That's what Jesus Christ said. And I believe it. How about you? And that's a good transition today because, again, in part two, we're going to move into our baptisms and you're going to get to witness those. I hope that you witness those. Uh, if you miss them in person on Sunday, that you'll get to watch them online and rejoice with our church. And you won't uh, regret that you did because the stories of faith and, and if you're just not there yet, I think these will hopefully be very inspirational to you to to see what uh, Christ has done in the life uh, of many others. Uh, so with that in mind, uh, let me pray to, to close our time together. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for your rescue mission to earth when Jesus came and suffered and died. He was abandoned by his friends. He, he was rejected by the people. He was falsely accused and ultimately gave up his life willingly as a sacrifice for our sins on the cross. But not only that, uh, he was buried and he rose on the third day. Hallelujah. And we're so gl glad, Lord, because if the resurrection didn't happen, I wouldn't be preaching today and there would be nothing to preach about. My life would be in shambles. I would not have any hope. No one would. And so we pray, Lord, give us that hope, the power of the resurrection that we just talked about from Ephesians, from your word. 
uh, stir that up in the believers that are here. Help those who are yet to believe that they're just encouraged one step closer to take that act of faith and that today would be the day that they trust in Jesus Christ. Protect all of the uh, eight people that are getting baptized at our church and help them to be protected uh, by your spirit from the evil one's attacks. And may they just know your closeness and may they be a testimony to, to many, many others. Uh, we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, thank you, church. Uh, so glad again that you're online with us and stay in touch through our Facebook page. Uh, and if, if you want to uh, uh, tithe or give online, that's very easy to do. Just go to my new, or newcommunity.church forward slash uh, giving. Uh, and also, I want to let you know that next week we have a brand new series starting. It's called Truth to Power. I think you're really going to enjoy it. We're going to dig into the, the, the book of Esther, which is such a great story. Uh, we're going to talk about how this amazing woman uh, did mighty acts and spoke truth to power for, for God in, in a very direct way. So you'll be inspired by that, and, and hopefully that'll be helpful in your spiritual journey. So jo join us next week, whether you can do that live or, or, or uh, and in person or whether on the video. Have a great Easter Sunday.